good they are, women drivers lack the killer instinct that makes a man risk his life to be first past the checkered flag. That is, unless the woman is Cynthia Quillen, driving an Argus and determined to win the ladies' trophy race the day after tomorrow. Or Teresa Montesino, driving for Italy in a Bellini. She too is passionately determined to win. So the race will be a real jungle clash between the world's leading fast women. What will you bet my darling wife didn't do that on purpose? Not a penny. What are you trying to do, kill her? She was making the pace, not me. Cynthia, I saw it. Where were you? On her lap. This vendetta nonsense has got to stop before somebody gets hurt. Tell that to Teresa, darling. I will. Simon, rumor has it that you kill nasty people. Do you? Oh, you have a victim in mind? Teresa Montesino. You can't be serious. Of course I'm serious. After all, you are the unscrupulous Simon Templar. So modest, what do you have? <laughs> a large dry martini. Uh, don't look now, Angel. But your wife just came in. Who cares? Look at her. Who? Teresa Montesino. Warming up my two-timing free-drinking husband for another qualifying lap. Well, you must admit he has impeccable taste. Oh, yes, that's my Godfrey. Do you know how he became a top racing driver? By winning races. By having a rich wife. Are you very rich? Loaded. Thanks. Buying sports cars for Godfrey takes plenty. Cheers. Cheers. We uh, all throw away our money on some things. Oh, yes. Godfrey's my bauble boy. Is he? Want to know something? What? I'm absolutely crazy about him. Isn't that a laugh? I don't think so. Thank you. So you see why I want to protect my investment from that continental sports model with the slippery clutch. I'd give £100,000 to see her dead. Well, I can't believe you mean that. Try me with a blank check and a ballpoint pen. Well, I know you can't take it with you, but there's no need to throw it away. Anyway, if Teresa's what you think she is, why not buy her off? I've got a better idea. You take her away from Godfrey. You don't have to be half trying. All right. Introduce us. Come on. Cynthia. Oh, Simon. Godfrey. Simon. This little high compression job is Teresa Montesino. Good friend of mine, Simon Templar. Miss Montesino. I am delighted to meet you. Isn't that nice? Lovely, darling. You've just won him. Come on, Godfrey. Where? Time to be a dutiful husband again. We got a dinner party, remember? Oh, yes, I've forgotten. Thought you had. A dull, respectably married couple, sweetie. Oh, how tedious for you, Godfrey, darling. Can't see us tomorrow in the pit, Simon. Good. Good well, Miss Montesino, I have got a marvelous idea. You have? Mm -hmm. Why don't we have a dinner party of our own for disreputably unmarried couples? And we won't invite anyone else. You are a delicious man. 
I like you more and more and more. Oh, it's uh, mutual. Even though I find it hard to believe you're a racing driver. Oh, you think I need muscles like a gorilla for driving? All it takes is nerve. And that you inherit from your father? Yes. You will meet him tomorrow. Before he crashed and hurt his leg, he was one of the greatest racing drivers in the world. You will uh, come up for one more drink? Oh, I'd love to, if you're not too tired. Oh, I could not sleep. I have too much on my mind. Oh, such as? Oh, I can kill Cynthia Quillen. I cannot help it. I hate her. Oh, Simon, please. Could you not be just a little bit more interested in getting rid of her for me? You are so clever. You would not make the mistakes like me. Oh, why do you hate her so? I want to win the race. And I want Godfrey all to myself. Oh, I'm only thinking of the kindest way to take him from her. Uh, not many girls would be so sensitive. Oh, please, don't go. Help me. All right, after I've uh, disposed of Cynthia and Godfrey's inherited her money, and you have married Godfrey, what's in it for me? We could uh, console ourselves until Godfrey met with an accident. Well, uh, I'm afraid I'll uh, have to think it over. Think here. No. Please. Uh, sorry. You refuse to help? I'm afraid so. It's uh, difficult, but I do. Why don't we put on tracksuits and have a real workout? Your bracelet, I believe. Oh, you! <laughs> Happy dreams. Good day, sir. I have the reservation, Karl Todorf. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, will you sign, please? Mm -hmm. You've uh, come for the racing, I expect. The, uh... Oh, yes. My room is where? At uh, number 22, at the top of the stairs. The price? Three guineas with breakfast. And without breakfast? It's inclusive. Incredible. 22. No. I will take that. This way, sir. Well, I think you'll be very comfortable here, sir. Thank you. Where there is a service charge included, I do not also tip. Oh, thank you, sir. Do not worry. 
She is as good as dead. Yes, car number one. So between the brandy and fighting with dear Godfrey half the night, I have an absolutely splitting headache. Can I get you something for it? Thank you, I'll be all right. Did you still get the vibrations? Never got over eight five revs. So how's the headache? Absolutely splitting. But Mrs. Quillen, the race is tomorrow. We've got to get it fixed today. Would you like me to take her out? Oh, Simon, would you? Can you buy me a helmet? Sure thing, Mr. Templer. see a burst like this before? Never. How's the car? Oh, she's great. Thanks to your quick thinking. Say, look. That's funny. What is? Well, before I went into the skid, I had a distinct impression that... Let's go back to the track. I don't get it. Could the hole in the tire be made by a bullet? You mean somebody took a shot at you? 
from that direction. Aha! Somebody lay there. That's pretty fancy marksmanship. Yes, but who'd want to kill you? Dozens of people, but it wasn't me they were after, it was Cynthia Quillen. So the question is, who would want to kill her? The Montesinos, maybe. She's crazy to win the lady's trophy, and Mrs. Quillen's the main competition. Point three four zero Magnum. Someone wanted to kill me? My spin-off wasn't an accident. Somebody using a high-powered rifle plugged the tire. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, it's possible, though. An expert shot with a telescopic sight. But who? Who hates me so much they want to see me dead? That's what I want to know. Let's face it, Simon. I'm not the world's most popular woman. You're not thinking of Godfrey. Well, that crossed my mind. Oh, dear boy, don't let those little spats of ours mislead you. And the crunch. Godfrey comes running back to Big Mama Moneybags because he has to. And that strengthens his motive rather than eliminating it. If I peg out, Godfrey's back on the breadline. And what about your will? Under the terms of my grandfather's estate. When I die, unless we have children, the money goes to Cousin Bertie in Boston. I think Cousin Bertie has a motive. Cousin Bertie's so loaded, he wouldn't bend over to pick up the national debt. Then somebody else has a reason for wanting you out of the way. Yes. And you know who? Teresa. Who else? So if you should die, Teresa will win the ladies' trophy race and Godfrey, all in one fell swoop. It's just bad luck, that's all. Stop it. If she'd been driving the car instead of temper, she'd be dead. Take it easy, somebody will hear you. Well, well. Romeo and Juliet. You know, Teresa, darling, I can't understand what men see in you. Ask Godfrey. Come along, Teresa. Sit down. Teresa and I are going out to dinner together. If you want me to buy that Maserati, sit down. I'll see you later. All right, kiddies, back to the drinkies. The show's over. That was a nice display, I must say. You have an ingrained way of treating women that disgusts me. If you find me so repellent, why did you marry? Because I... Oh, what's the use? Oh, come on, let's have this out. I married you because I loved you. I always will. Yeah. And what business is it of yours where I was at 11 this morning? In a nutshell, someone took a shot at Mrs. Quillen. You joke. Not about things like that. You know I'll do this? I will. When I find out who has a real motive. And this, this motive, you think I have it, huh? Why not? You're desperate to win the race. And Cynthia is our only opposition. You're quite right. If Mrs. Quillen win this race, we're not happy. In fact, we will be broke. No more money. So you hope that whoever took the shot will try again? Of course. And succeed. Double three. I win. Game shot. Set him up, Paddy. Pint of the best for me, lad. It's a ruddy racket. Two shillings, please, sir. For one beer. Bar prices. It's extortionate. Two pounds, please. I agree, it's shocking. Hmm? It's the price of booze these days. In a country like this, nothing surprises me. Down for the races? As a spectator, merely. Pretty dull spot. Off the course, I mean. You amuse yourself. Darts. 
passes the time. Have you ever played? No. Would you like to have a try? What is the game? Well, the first one to score 301 wins, and the loser pays for the round of drinks. Would you like to have a go? Well, what do I have to do? Oh, it's simple, really. You start and finish with a double between the wires and the outer rim here, and after that, it's just arithmetic. Is that to have a go? Mm hmm. The little compartment with the 20 is right? That's very good. Fine ahead. I thought you never played before. I haven't. Do I go on? Yeah, you have two more darts. You're not the world champion in disguise, are you? <laughs> I promise you I've never played before. You've won six games in a row. I thank you. Are you... Are you sure you're not the world's champion? Oh, quite sure. Come on, then. I'll drink up your ill-gotten gains. Oh, no, no, no. Only one. I, uh, must keep my hands steady. But you can, uh, pay for the others, and I drink them later. Mr. Todoff, telephone for you. Oh, uh, excuse it, please. In the booth, sir. Hmm. Put off. Yes, I know. I've just seen him. No, I shall leave immediately. A man like Simon Templer is not to be taken lightly. I'm afraid not one of my suspects is good enough to hit a tire at that distance. So you're not getting anywhere. You said it. Me neither. <laughs> I just lost six start games in a row. Oh, it was a big winner. Oh, that uh, chairman Waller. You passed him on the way and he'll be back in a second. Mm, he must be good. Cheers. Good. I never saw anything like him. Absolutely fantastic marksmanship. That Eric von Strohen character. Be Told off. Yes, he's in his room. What number? Uh, 22. Thank you. Patty, you better go around the back. Um, watch out. It could be dangerous. Right. Covered me. Come on. We'll never catch. 
catch him now. Let's see if we can pick up the trail from the hotel. But he can't have checked out he hasn't paid his bill. What do you know about him? Well, only his name, Tordoff. Where did he leave an address? Just London. Why, anybody come to see him? Not that I know of. A phone call? Yes, yes, he did have a call shortly after he arrived. Man or woman? Oh, well, I can't remember. I, I mean, I just didn't pay any attention, and, and we're full up for the racing. Oh, wait a minute, he made a call himself. Here it is, to Brighton. 290578. I'll try it. I ought to have known. Nobody can throw darts that good and be honest. Stage door, if drum theatre. Betty, you feel like seeing a show? You've got a pencil, Patty. Which is Maximilian's dressing room? He doesn't see anybody. I think you'll find he sees me. Room 60. Thank you. You'd better wait here. Good evening. Is it really? You want something? Some advice. I know only my own business. Oh, but you're so good at it. And what do you want my advice? In your professional opinion, would it be possible for a crack shot like you to hit the tire of a racing car at 700 yards? What kind of a question is that? A simple and to the point. <laughs> Makeup's running. Here. Seven years bad luck for a start.
hired you? <laughs> Who hired you? belongs to Teresa Montesino. Are you sure? Positive. Now look, Templar, I want some straight answers. Inspector, you've had them. <laughs> Do you seriously expect me to believe that man tried to kill you today? Believe it or not, it is true. By shooting out a tire at a distance of 500 yards. 700 yards, only he didn't know I was driving the car. Yeah. He meant to kill Cynthia Quillen. It's the craziest story I've ever heard in my life. Inspector, all you know at the moment is somebody fired a shot from that window. Yes, that's right. You don't know whether it was a man or a woman. No, I don't. So, at the best, you have a long job ahead of you, tracking down Tordoff's background, his associates, trying to find somebody with a motive. Mm. You heard the shot fired? Uh, yes. While you were waiting at the stage door? That's right. And a few moments later, you saw a car come out of the alleyway and drive off? Yes. What make was it? Did you recognize it? No. I couldn't see. Inspector, whoever shot Tordoff did it to keep him quiet. And I promise you, the same killer will make another attempt on Cynthia Quillen before tomorrow's race. Oh, good evening, Mac. Well, what are you doing up so late? Oh, I have some work to do in the car. Oh, I'll be making a cup of tea later on. Would you like one? Well, that'll be fine, Max. Thanks. Right. Simon! <laughs> Don't tell me I woke you up. But of course. You know what time it is. Oh, you've been in bed for hours? Look, what is this? Why are you here? I couldn't wait to find out what you thought about Maximilian's farewell performance. What I thought about what? Your sharpshooting, knife-throwing friend, remember? What are you talking about? Brighton. Brighton? Yes. You were there. I was not. I saw you. Oh, it's impossible. Is it? Yes. Because I was in bed shortly after eight. Tomorrow is the ladies' trophy race. Oh, yes. And you have to be needle-eyed and full of reflexes. Look, Simon, I do not know what you are getting at, but I have been asleep. Did you loan your car to anybody? No. He's been in the garage all evening. Not all evening. The engine's still hot. Somebody was driving it less than ten minutes ago. You mean somebody took it? I mean a man was shot tonight. Oh, you are crazy. Out of your head. The man you hired to kill Cynthia. I cannot even take you seriously. I am not the type to murder. I am too... Feminine. So was Lucrezia Borgia. Here's your tea, Paddy. choice. Oh, no Teresa? Uh, she went to bed early. Cynthia? I don't know where she is and I don't care. Time, gentlemen. Time. The one thing I love, it's an all-male evening. Oh, who are you with? Uh, some of the boys just popped in for a nightcap. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, hello? Hello. Uh, is Mr. Templar there, please? Oh, just a moment. I'll get him for you. Mr. Templar, there's a call for you. Oh, thanks. See, you had better let me drive you home. Well, I'm as sober as a mule. <laughs> Thelma, don't you think so? Whatever you say, Mr. Quillen. You know, Thelma, you're a lovely girl. Thanks. Some of these nights, we're going to have some dinner together. Eh?
It was Paddy. Cynthia's car has been sabotaged. Was it a man or woman? I don't know, honestly. Well, surely you must have seen something. Look, I didn't even get the lights on. I, I stepped into the dark garage and oh, somebody crushed me. Stop, Axel, that's been loosened. Surely that would have been discovered before the race. Oh, sure, that's a routine check. It doesn't make any sense. Anything else wrong? Not that I can find. You said all the cars have been tampered with tonight. Oh, Mac, that's the night watchman. He's checking now. So far, we found six. Just with, you know, small things. It's completely crazy. Including the Montesino car? Well, we couldn't get into their garage. It's locked from the inside. Nobody answered. What's the matter? What's wrong? You've been here all evening? Of course I've been here all evening. Why? Well, the night watchman pounded on your door a little while ago. There was no reply. I know hear him. Very convenient. What you say? My leg, she hurts sometime in the damn weather. I take sleeping pill. Half a dozen cars have been tampered with tonight. Sabotaged, but not yours. Very lucky for you. You make a I do something? Did you? Listen, listen. I win the fair and square. I got better car, the best. My Teresa, the best driver. She should be I teacher, and I'm the greatest in the world. Tomorrow we will win. Hello, Templar. Enjoying yourself? Not particularly. No sporting blood? It all seems a bit pointless. To me, a car is something to get you from point A to point B. Preferably in one piece. How does the accommodator see everything? He doesn't, eh? There are observers stationed at various points around the circuit. They report to him and uh, he repeats what they tell him. Ah, fascinating. By the way, I've thought over your phone call. And? I need my head examined, but I'll go along with the plan. It'll work. I promise. It'd better. Hold the best place you can from the start, and don't worry about her. Hmm? No, Papa. She'll be trying to make you burn at the end. Now you keep your best lap time until I give you the signal. Yes, Papa. You are nervous, huh? Very. Oh, child, it is not the end of the world. I'm just saying that if I lose, it is the end of the world. Uh, Enrico, all set to win? You will see. Simon, I look for you all morning. I slept in. Good luck. Thank you. She's tuned to the button. You'll sweep the field. Been over everything, Paddy? From top to toe. Any other little mementos from our midnight caller? None of the cars were badly damaged. The security boys think it was some sort of crank out to cause trouble. An Italian crank, about five foot four. Lay off, will you, Cynthia? You're obsessed about Teresa. Coming from you, Godfrey, darling, that's very funny. If I stick to the plan, I have a fair chance of winning. Every chance. I'm afraid I don't have a light. Godfrey. All right. It's funny, I must have left my ladder at home. You don't have time anyway. The other cars are starting to warm up. OK, to horse. I feel like smashing a few records today. Where were you all morning? London. Find out anything? Plenty. So in the front row, we've got number one, Cynthia... Oh, boys, it won't be long now. It certainly won't. And number six, Janet Morton and the brand new Hawley. And that's a jolly fine effort for its first time out. And now they're moving up from the dummy grid.
South Bank, they're still very closely bunched together, with the Argus and the Bellini in front now, and the others chopping and changing all the time. First lap, 143. Not bad. She can do better. and still this great battle for the lead between the Argus and the Bellini. It does look as if the Italian car has more power on the straights. Keep that up. Huh. If she does, something's got to go. Either her or the car. Congratulations, Godfrey. You've pulled off the perfect murder. You're crazy. Life insurance, wasn't it? A hundred thousand pounds worth? I checked it out in London this morning. Now, look here, Templar. I'm complimenting you, Godfrey. You were the mysterious intruder. Was I? Sabotage six cars, including Cynthia's, so that nobody could point a sure finger at you. What was it? The steering? Something Paddy couldn't spot? You'll have to prove it. I can't. The car's burned out. Exactly. So, you've got rid of all your problems in one afternoon. You say that in public, I'll slap you with a slander suit so fast you won't know what hits you. Get out of the way, will you? Oh, Godfrey, this is Inspector Dawes, CID. Inspector? Mr. Quillen, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. Murder? <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. You hired Tord off? Who? The sharpshooter. <laughs> He's talking rubbish. He put a bullet through the tire of Cynthia's car when I was driving it. It was meant for her. You hired him. I don't have to take this. It's absolute drivel, all of it. We can prove it. How? By getting a dead man to testify? How do you know Tord off's head? I uh, read in the papers. It hasn't been in the papers. We kept it quiet. You know he's dead because you shot him. <laughs> now I've heard everything. Do you recognize this? Uh, why? It's yours, isn't it? <sighs> Looks like mine. It has your initials on it. All right, so it's mine. Why? We found it outside the window of the theatre. You dropped it when you shot Tordoff. I swear, I was nowhere near Brighton last night. Brighton? Who said anything about Brighton? Did you read that in the papers? I uh, guess Patty must have told me. Paddy? What's he got to do with it? Well, uh, he, he was there. You know he was there because you were there too. Godfrey, dear boy, let's face it. You have had it. In spades. No, Godfrey, I'm not dead. I'm very much alive. A neat trick for the commentator, Inspector. It took quite a bit of convincing to get him to fake the report of your crash. Oh, Godfrey, about the lighter. 
I lifted it from your dressing table after you went to sleep last night. Sorry. Don't let your grief overwhelm you. I won't. When Simon told me you hired that gunman and tried to sabotage my car today, my burning passion for you cooled very rapidly. I should have killed you last night. I nearly did. Go! Here's the leader coming into the finishing straight now. Teresa Montesino wins. I'm sorry you had to throw the race. But you didn't win Godfrey.